Hey, Ellie, progressive friends and family. Uh, this is Dick and Sharon joining you again. So today we're going to be talking about sometimes what seems to be the indecipherable or undecipherable. I don't know which word is right. Terms that are used uh, during the election season. So I wrote a piece. Uh, the title of it is Super Delegates or Delegates Who Will Decide Your Fate or Who Will Decide Your Future. And um, in it, I included an image that has like a woman who seems frustrated because there's just so much lingo, um, political talk that is used during the election cycles that we just don't normally use. And I know when I was younger, this used to really confuse me and there was no place where I learned this stuff. So I decided to write a piece about it and it's a series. So um, Dick, what'd you think about the piece? Well, so so I, I agree. Even as far, we're pretty far into politics, into the politi political world. But every time an election comes up, uh, th there's a lot of confusion about what these terms mean. And, and I would assume that a, a certain amount of the confusion is intentional. Uh, it's like the insiders want to, to know what's going on. And so they can baffle the general public and get what they want. That's always what it seemed like to me. Well, you know, I remember a few years back, like maybe 20 years ago, that I had, when I was really first getting involved with a Democratic Party politics, and you and I had joined a Dem club. And I went to, we went to a few meetings and then there was going to be an election for the delegates that were gonna to go to the national convention. So you and I had gone to, I don't know, maybe uh, six monthly meetings and we had been at every single meeting. And then on the day that there was going to be an election for the delegates. So the election was going to happen at the location where the Dem Club regularly met. And we used to have, I don't know, maybe 30 people met regularly. But on the day of the selection, there had to be about 200 people, 200 people that we had never heard of. And they seem to be bringing in like vans full of their friends who are gonna vote for them to be delegates to the Democratic National Convention. And that's when I feel like, ooh, this is ugly. I don't like the way this looks. And so what was happening was there would be people that had joined the Dem Club, let, let's say a month before, just to qualify to vote for a delegate and then they'd never show up again. You'd never see them again for four more years. But that delegate may maybe brought in their 20 or 30 best friends. And those 20 or 30 best friends would vote for them. And that's when I realized that something was up. Go ahead. Yeah. So so I remember, I remember two things that were kind of surprising. But but I would say to some extent that was our fault. I mean, the, the, all those 200 people knew what the game was and we just hadn't done enough research we just thought we would uh show up in all our splendor and be elected and indeed we might have been if we'd done any campaigning but the other the opponents had i didn't even mention that we ran i'm just talking well, about well we were in and we lost right and, and, and that wasn't my point my point is but, but but let me let me talk too so so yeah so so to some extent that was our fault but it but it was just what i'm saying like the the people who knew what the game was played the game. And if you didn't know what the game was like us, you got left out in the cold. And I'm not saying we minded the cold very much. The other thing I remembered is when there was a, a Dem Club primary to who they would in an endorsement session for, for various uh, local office holders, the same kind of thing happened. Uh, dear Jose Huizar was running for city council and on the night of the primary, he brought in a hundred people who had never been to one of our Dem Club meetings, and they all paid their 10 bucks and signed in, and he won. He probably would have won anyway, but it was like dirty politics. And who would have thought that of, of such an honest, decent guy as Jose Wezar? For those who don't know, Jose Wezar is now serving time for um, 
criminal activity that he was engaged in during the time that he was a city Los Angeles County City City Council representative. Okay, so let's get back to these delegates or superdelegates. So in the picture that I created, I have terms like broker convention, superdelegates, gerrymandering, electoral college, open primary delegates. So let's talk to where we are right now. So today is July the 8th. And uh, we've got a few months until the November election. For the most part, I do believe that every single state in the state of, in the United States has already had a primary election. And so in the, the purpose for having a primary election is to select a nominee who will represent the party when they go to the general election. So the general election is in November. And all the states have already had their primary elections. And I included a table in this piece that shows how many um, delegates are awarded to each state. So let's talk about the delegates. So Dick and I just already talked about how you get to be a delegate, right? So you run usually at your at the very, very local level in the neighborhood, in the precincts. In our case, it was a Democratic club. People go and they run like in California. California gets to have 424 what they're called pledged delegates. Now, I don't understand why really it's necessary for these pledged delegates to uh, to go to the convention, but you do go on your own dime. You pay for yourself, you pay for your hotel, and you go, and in this case, it's gonna be in Chicago. Hmm, kind of scary, sounds to me a lot like 1968. But anyway, um, so the 424 Californians will be going to Chicago, 424 in California, in Georgia, Georgia gets 108. Uh, Alabama gets 52. All of that you can see in the charts. So so a pledge a pledge delegate means they are pledged to a certain candidate. So so it could be that the four since uh, Biden won the primary here, the 424 some percentage of them would when they show up, they have to vote for the candidate they're pledged to on the first ballot. And, and then, so the the unpledged delegates are 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 freewheelers that they, they can show up to the convention and and lobby on behalf of anybody. Um, do you want to talk about the mess we're in currently? Well, I want to talk about the difference between pledged and unpledged delegates. So, like I said, the delegates that are pledged are the ones who have participated in a contest to be elected to be a delegate to be sent to the uh, Democratic National Convention in Chicago. So neighborhood people, they all get together in a, in a, in a, at a cafeteria or a library or something. Um, in our case, it was at a restaurant, but the unpledged delegates, that's a whole different ball of wax. The unpledged delegates are also known as superdelegates. And those typically are mayors, governors, um, other elected officials, party insiders, people that they call party leaders and elected officers, P-L-E-O, party leaders, elected officers, generally are superdelegates, and they do not have to compete to be chosen to be a delegate. They get that automatically, and it comes with their title. And those people are not pledged to a particular nominee. So for the most part in California, just about all of them, it could be all of the pledge delegates are going to Joe Biden. It could be all of them. Um, it's, it's something that I'll look up and, and put it down at the bottom. The unpledge, we don't know who they're going to be um, supporting until the convention. However, the thing is, whoever the nominee is going to be, they've got to get 50% or more of the pledged delegates. And Joe Biden already has that. The total is 3,949 and he's got over 3,000. So he already has it in the bag. So Dick, you were asking- So yeah, so I think, I think, so the unpledged delegates, I mean, I think the theory is that these are deeply steeped in democratic party politics and deeply knowledgeable. I mean, the, the, the positive side. So they, they, they provide a certain amount of stability. And on the other hand, they are, uh, they make sure there's no fundamental change. They, they often swing into play to, to, to blunt somebody like Bernie Sanders. Yeah. And I want to remind you that we're talking about 
a convention for the Democratic Party. The Republican Party has a convention. The Green Party has a convention. Each party has their own convention. But the Democratic Party, in our case, is the one that we're focusing on. And, and truth be told, as much as I would not like this to be true, in the United States, we really only have two viable parties. Um, the Green Party is starting to grow, and I hope to that Cornell West would have stayed with the Green Party. He didn't. Um, he's tried to create a new party, and that new party actually is called it's called the. Um, let's see if I can find this. I can't find. Well, but I, I think you misspoke there to say that uh, we have two major parties. Really, we have one and a half major party, maybe one and a quarter major party, yeah. funded by the same group of yes. people. Uh, now, now the Republicans have kind of gone off the right edge of the of the table with the policies they promote, but generally, you know, it's Tweedledum and Tweedledee on the policies that they talk about. They have something to argue about, but when 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 a uh, when a George Bush gets in office. How different really is what he does from from Barack Obama? Different in some respects, but but basically owned, bought and bought and owned by the same group of deep pocketed individuals. That's right. So um, so let's just do a wrap up and a summary. What we talked about today is very limited and not an exhaustive explanation of the difference between pledged and unpledged. And another way to say the, say the same exact thing is delegates versus superdelegates. The regular delegates are the people who compete to be delegates. And if the competition actually began sometime in between February and April. So months ago, you had to fill out a form on the Democratic Party website, get your name in, and then you had to show up, and then you had to pitch your campaign to a group of people, and then you would be selected to be a delegate. To be a super delegate, you are generally a politician, an elected official, a party leader, somebody that is um, has power within the party. And of the super delegates in California, we have 72 of those. And that includes mayors, the governor, a bunch of, of people like that. Those are the people who are not committed to Joe Biden. This case, it doesn't matter because Joe Biden has already satisfied the requirement. He's met the basic standard of having more than 50% um, already pledged to him. So when they go to Chicago, they already know who they're voting for. They're voting for Joe Biden. Now the next right I, I don't think Biden has a majority yet because not all, some states they they are divided up proportionally no, by how many votes I swear to you well, I think okay so so I guess where I was going with my point was that that all this has kind of turned on its head with the growing calls for Joe Biden right. to step aside and him him fighting to 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 stay on the ticket and and I don't think it's determined yet but the the question is if he does indeed get encouraged to move off the ticket, then then what happens? How, right. how, how do the delegates go then? So from all that, the research, that, that, that can be a, the, that can be the discussion for our, our next video like this. OK, so I didn't just write this out of thin air. I actually did research and Joe Biden is the nominee. The way for Joe Biden to not be the nominee, he's got to voluntarily relinquish a seat that, um, the seat being the, the seat of being the nominee, he's got to give that up voluntarily. There is no mechanism built into the party system itself that gets rid of Joe Biden. Um, there are people that are trying to urge him to, but he keeps saying he's still gonna run. So we'll see how this plays out and we'll see if they change the rules or if they pull a rabbit out of the hat. But as it stands right now, it's Joe Biden. Well, thanks for joining us. Dick, you want to say anything before we leave? No, that's it. I'm good. I'll see you next time. We'll talk about what's going to go on when, when Biden is encouraged to leave. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that. All right. So long, everybody. Thank you for sticking around. If you like the LA Progressive content and the discussions we have here, please consider clicking the subscribe button below and also give us a thumbs up. That helps to grow our audience by feeding the algorithm, which helps to get this content in front of more eyes. Thanks for stopping by. We really appreciate your support.